Welcome to Dude RV. Hey, I really appreciate you stopping by, and of course, say it with me, you got here just in time. That's right, just in time. This is this is not a travel video. I know it's Sunday morning, and this is not a travel video. This is a continuation and something some more. So the, this past Friday, you saw that I added 400 amps of lith lithium iron phosphate batteries down there in the, the step, put in a battery meter. So we've I've, I've pretty well upgraded the whole power bank. And I want to upgrade the solar. Trudy came with a 100 amp solar. Basically, it's just a little battery charger, a little battery maintainer. We, we want to go, I want to take it to the next level and turn it into an actual usable power supply. And to do that, I have to change out the charge controller. Because the little ZAMP, or not ZAMP, it's a Go Solar charge controller. can only handle like 10 amps. Uh, it's supposedly rated for 180 watts, but it's just not very big. So... I, and, and, and while I was doing this project, putting in, especially when I was putting in that battery monitor, I found a hole behind this cabinet over here. There's a hole straight down to the ground. That can't be very energy efficient when I'm trying to cool my coach down. And I know when we were camping in this last winter and we had the pipes freeze, that's where they froze. So I got to plug that hole. But to plug that hole, I got to do some disassembly. And you'll notice that I, I tried to cover up some nail holes and it just didn't turn out. And Yappy said, that I, that's not going to work. And, and there's more. And the way the controls have been configured down here, they're all right down on the floor. And you can't really, so this thing. This is a multi-switch. This controls a lot of things, but it was mounted right here. And to get, you had to get on your on the steps on your knees to do that. So it would be way more convenient if it was actually closer to the door. And this stuff down here, I can't see it unless I'm standing outside and kneeling on the steps. That's not very good for the body. So I'm gonna move some of these components up here so that I can, they're, so they're kind of halfway. I, I can bend over or I can step up on a step and see that information. But that hole, let's go down here and let's see if we can. So that hole is, not sure how that looks, but it's right in there. And if we look, Right in here, you can't see it. You can't see it yet. But if we turn off the lights, and you look in that, <laughs> look at all that daylight. That's a whole lot of daylight. That can't be very energy efficient. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be doing so I'm gonna do some trim work. I'm actually gonna cut this board out here. This is this stuff is just it's masonite. That's compressed paper. I hate it. But it's behind this cabinet, and I don't want to disassemble that. So I'm gonna cut that off right there. And I'm going to put in some wainscoting, some beadboard, painted to match. It'll be painted this color, so it's not going to be an exact match, but it'll be a close match. And I'm going to put in an equipment panel, a recessed panel. So all of my components are going to sit back inside a little box that will frame out. It'll look more better. It'll be a little more convenient. 
but most importantly while I have that off I can get back in there and spray some foam in that big hole because it's it's a it's a very big hole I don't know I, I'll, I'll just start working and do my best to remember the camera <laughs> I usually get absorbed in my project and forget that oh yeah they're they're with me too so the reason and and the reason i'm doing a recessed box is because the solar charge controller this was recommended this is amazon's this is an amazon's choice product uh this was a a really great price for a 60 amp charge controller should be able to accommodate up to 600 500 watts of solar that'll work because we only have 200 but uh, it's an mppt which is uh, supposed to be a little more or a lot more efficient so anything to be more efficient is great so i'm gonna go build my panel get it primed so that can be drying before i start doing demo in here so let's let's go to the shop let's go to the garage you know what happens when you start packing up to move and you pack up your your garage and your shop and you put part of it in storage in one place and part of it in storage in another place and you you take your your shelving units and your organization stuff out you end up with a <laughs> with piles. Oh, and then somebody runs into your truck and you have to take all the stuff you carry in your truck that stays in the truck, that comes out and goes in the middle too. I got a mess to sort out here. But meanwhile, I got a carpentry project to do. So let me pull out some stuff and we'll go to work. So rather than messing with the camera, I just went and did it. All right, so now I need to come in and fill in the, the, the voids and put a coat of paint on it or a coat of primer. That dries, I can do a little finishing, finish sanding on the little push out and we can put a coat of paint on it. Meanwhile, I need to go figure out how to cut that other board. Ah. So our board, cut, I had that plywood cut at Lowe's and the guy running the saw did not allow for his saw blade. So. I'm not 42, I'm 41 and 15 sixteenths. way to do this cutting is going to be with utility blade, utility knife, a razor blade.
this is my foot looking through the hole in the floor. Oh. Oop, breaker just tripped. Too much load. All right, I'm getting hot anyway. Time for a break. There. Hold on, let's step back so we can see that. I think that's going to look way better. Give us a little more character on that wall and clean things up. It's no longer all on the floor. I like it, I like it. Just going to let that kind of dry so I can put the final, put, start putting the, the finish paint on it. Hard to do this with one hand. Gotta watch for this foam sticks to everything. So I got the hole plugged and then a little, little piece of wood that was holding the solar charge controller that was not even attached because the staples had fell. Anyway, I turned that into a, a cap. That way the foam doesn't push back up. And I've got that one plugged. <laughs> and it dripped out. That's how big the hole was. I could feel air coming up through both of those. Anyway, now it's time to go up on the roof while the while it's pleasant, cool. I I, I got something up on top. I know I said it was going on top, but before we go on top, we gotta. We got to meet the next sponsor, An another first time sponsor. I would like to introduce to you Alriska Mono Solar Panel, 200 watts. Let's, let's check this out. Now for, I, I, I have a 100 watt panel on, on Trudy Thunder. But it's never produced 100 watts. I think the most I've ever seen it producing is like maybe 40. So, and, and I know that you don't get 100% on, on solar panels, but we have a charge controller that will handle up to 180 watts. So a 200 watt solar panel ought to work out just fine. It is a substantially larger than the one that's up there which means I'll have to do some configuring. The warranty card from Alris Alriska. In case you're wondering about the blue tape, Amazon hates when, whenever it sees any kind of label, just white, it gets flagged. from brackets. Maybe I can reuse the ones that are up there. This is, this here's a learning experience. It's, it's kind of weighty. I 
I'm on top of things. Actually, I'm on top of Trudy. So the new panel, the new panel is 27 by 58. Current panel is a little bit smaller. So it's 40 by 26 and a quarter. So rather than taking that one off, I think I'm just going to put the new one right here. That way I don't have to worry about the holes. And we're just going to disconnect and connect. Before we install the new panel, 4.9 amps. The sun is, it's about two o'clock in the afternoon. The sun is pretty well straight up top. And it's hot. I've just learned, <laughs> I learned a lesson. Fortunately, it's not a really painful lesson. PO2. According to the Go Power Owner's Manual, that means the solar panel is putting out its over voltage. Too much power. So that'll we're gonna we're gonna call it right here on on this more power video, uh, and then I'll I'll reset and do a solar upgrade video because i'm gonna have to go with a new solar controller yada 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 what a beautiful day to be on the roof of the rv we got a north wind blowing it is the middle of july yesterday high was like 105 today we're in the mid 90s great temperature great weather to be installing a solar panel on the roof. Went ahead and put a kind of an air dam there. It's probably not necessary, but I'd rather not have wind getting up underneath it. So now it's time to go. Now I gotta go program this new charge controller. Read, learn how to read Mandarian. As soon as they get that figured out, we'll look at the whole system. You ready for the big reveal? There it is. There is our little renovation. I can see all of my data now. A little more organized. I can reach that switch from both indoors and outdoors. Those two stayed because that one is the step and that's the that is all the main power. I use screws to attach this panel so I can take it off if I need to to access that cavity back there that was inaccessible. I'm very happy. It's, it took me a little longer than expected to do this part of it, but it was, it was better to go slow so that it looks good than to go fast and have it not look so good. I found the, the coat hanger at uh, Lowe's. 
and I actually ripped a piece, a strip, because that's this is thicker than this, so it recesses. It actually made a nice little transition. I'm very pleased with it. Y'all tell me in the comments down below what do you think. Could I done, could have done this better? Anyway, we're done. I'd like to give a special shout out of thanks to the vendors that sponsored this edition of the Dude RV Traveling Road Show. Solar panels, solar charge controller. All the products used in this video are from Amazon. I'll post a link in the card and in the description. That link will take you to the Friday's Finds playlist on the Dude RV Gear Recommendation Amazon page. Your business is most appreciated. It's beer 30. I got a peach beer waiting on me. Before I close out this video, I want to touch on the, the little the, the solar charge controller a, a little bit. I, f I found this to be rather a challenge to set up because the the instruction book is not exactly clear. The pictures are, are very fuzzy. Some of them are really small and the, the writing is really small. You need a magnifying glass to read it. But then the, the names of the different elements that you need to adjust don't really sync up with what the lang there's a language barrier. That's the best way to explain it. There's a language barrier. And also, I struggled with one aspect of, of this, and, and I see this is going to be an issue with most 60 amp charge controllers in relation to my motor home. Now, it may be different for somebody else's motor home, but in my motor home, I have a load, a DC load center that controls all the, the DC components. So really all the solar charge controller does is charge the battery bank. But the solar charge controller has a DC load management area. And you actually go through, so when you're going through the menu, it gets confusing as to what you really needed to focus on because I didn't need the load management side uh, and understanding in their descriptions which was the DC management side versus the battery charging side uh, was a bit of a challenge for me. And I spent a, about two hours sorting it out. And all I really needed was for the solar charge controller to stop charging at 13.5, that's the bulk. And then we really don't need a float on lithium ion batteries, but these all have it. So that needs to be set at 13.4. So once you reach the 13.5, it goes into the float mode, but the battery's already there. So it doesn't actually kick on. We also need a low limit threshold on the battery bank, the charger in the battery bank, so that when we drop below 11.5, when we drop below 11.5, it starts charging in bulk. That's really all, we, all, all is needed with this charge controller, but you've got to wade through the menus to get past the load management side to find those settings. It's not real user friendly. I didn't find a whole lot of information online on how to program it just for battery maintenance. And that may just be my ignorance. So with that being said, let's go to the closeout. I sure appreciate you staying with me up to this point. If you found some value or entertainment, please blast me out or click on that thumbs up and blast me out across your social media. That helps way more than you know. If you've not already, I'd be most honored if you'd consider clicking on the subscribe button. I create all kinds of content. DIY RV stuff is one of my things. If you've already subscribed and have been following along, I cannot say it enough. Thank you. I am most grateful. And for my patrons, man, 
Thank you so much. You guys rock. All right, y'all come back now, you hear?